Camilo is now going to uh, speak about what's been going on more recently with the, with the Coke campaign in Sinatranel, and after that we'll have a uh, question and answer session. So thank you. I'll keep it brief just to allow some more conversation uh, back and forth amongst folks, since many of you have been active in other capacities on the campaign. But one thing to make very clear is perhaps to mix up the, the flow of the, the lecture a bit, is to understand critically how this could happen, right? particularly some folks who have debated us in previous forums, some folks who will make the vote tomorrow, Thursday here at NYU, that as an example, let's say, uh, what's your name here in the grid? Um, Taziana. Taziana? Yeah. Uh, let's say Taziana is a worker at a bottling plant in Colombia. Perhaps she operates a forklift like Luis did. Maybe she's a chemical technician that mixes the syrup with the carbonated water. She is any worker, you may know, some of your workers as well, would have the basic right to request from her boss. <coughs> Let's say this guy in the front is her boss. What's your name? <laughs> Ken? Ken. Ken. You say, hey, boss, Ken, help me out, boss. I would like perhaps maybe uh, an increase in wage, perhaps health benefits, <coughs> maybe I want a pension plan for when I retire. Ken here knows full well that giving you those benefits will cost <coughs> him money. It's going to hurt his bottom line. <coughs> So that happens here. Jessica mentioned the Walmart, the Starbucks. That's nothing new. However, in the case of Colombia, there's an added element where we'll bring in, what's your name over there? Eating your nuts in the purple? <laughs> <laughs> Ali. Let's say Ali gets called by Ken. Ken says, hey Ali, do me a favor. Keep an eye on Tanzania. She's actually been demanding her rights in the bottling factory, which is hurting my bottom line. It just so happens that you can tell by the look on her face that Ali is part of the right-wing desk squads of Colombia. <laughs> part of the desk squads that have been responsible for over three quarters of all violations of human rights in Colombia, major actors in the drug trade, and our, and our dear friends, ex-president George Bush, Department of State terrorist list. Because of the collusion between Ali and Ken, there have been nine murders, nine murders of workers like you, and just within our union, the largest union of folk workers in Colombia. And so it's in this context that you hear of the murder of Isidro. And one fact that Luis Salopo didn't mention is that in fact, after they were all unlawfully fired, new workers were rehired just three weeks later for one third of the salary, showing a clear economic interest in this violence. And certainly you may wonder, sitting here in the room, wondering, well, what the heck can I do? Certainly Colombia is a far place. Many folks think of it to be a very violent country as well. How could NYU or how could other members of the community actually have an impact? And that's where the true force and I think beauty of the campaign has actually taken shape, where because of the enormous pressure of schools like NYU or of unions locally in the US, the coal quota has been forced to protect its most prized possession, which is not its brown sugary bubble water or its enormous list of products that include Coke, Diet Coke, Daphne Free Coke, Cherry Coke, that vanilla Coke as well, Sprite, Dasani, Panza, Minimade, Adwala, that new vault energy drink, vitamin water was bought recently as well, all of which go to feed their most prized possession, which is their image that brand label which is recognized perhaps beyond the world we probably saw last Sunday during that football game. Because of that, in attacking that image through the campaign that Sinatranal has run and through the support of folks like you, we've been able to make sure that the murders that we've heard take place over the last 13 years do not continue. And if there's any doubt that the boycott at NYU has made any critical progress, the fact that while repression continues, in fact, just last week, the individual you saw in the video, the shorter one in the front, who was loading power right into the truck, Luis Eduardo Garcia, he received a packet in what's, what's here is called a, a yard, a solar, where there was notes left by the paramilitaries, now known, thanks to Uribe, in a different name, as the Black Eagles. They basically said, you motherfuckers continue with the reunion, you begin to decide what color you want your coffins. And not just the color of your coffins, but the coffins of your family. Signed, Black Eagles with Uribe until death. And that shows that while certainly high profile murders of members of our union has declined, 
which in essence is somewhat of good news. <coughs> the repression and the bearing down of workers' rights continues. And so on behalf of our entire union in Colombia and the three of us in the U.S., we'd like to first thank you personally for your work and second, make it very clear that no matter what your capacity as an administrator, as a student, as a member of the, of the media, as members of other committees here in New York, that you please continue the campaign. And then certainly we'll be able for questions afterwards since our speaking tour was cut short due to the fact that we have to leave on Thursday, but certainly the campaign hopefully will continue a victory with tomorrow here at NYU. So thank you very much.